Hello, everyone. Welcome to this Sigfox webinar, Device Makers 101. Thank you, Vries, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Benigno Moreno, and I'm Pre-Sales Manager in Sigfox Spain. We are going to depict what a device maker or even a tech curious can do for creating its own Sigfox device. So, do you want to build a device with Sigfox technology? Now we are going to analyze the different steps to do so. We are going to see also the tools and resources available for making this possible. Let's start. During the webinar, we'll explore the big picture, meaning how is the Sigfox ecosystem structured with all the players involved, focusing on the device makers, who are the roots of Sigfox ecosystem and the ones allowing the Internet of Things to provide valuable data. We are going to ask ourselves who we are, as the approach to the market is going to be different depending on who you are. And the main part of the webinar, the device maker journey, from prototyping to production, where we are going to explore the steps needed, needed to get make our device idea into a reality. At the end, we'll have time for questions and answers. Please write down your questions during the presentation and we'll come back to them at the end. The big picture. As you probably know, Sigfox is a connectivity provider focused on the Internet of Things, thanks to the characteristics of its technology. What you see here is a big picture of the ecosystem and the role of each player. At the top, we have the players involved in any Sigfox solution, chip and module vendors, to whom Sigfox provides Sigfox libraries and certifies its integration through Sigfox verified certification, which we'll see in a moment. Chip and module vendors sell and support Sigfox compatible hardware, such as transceivers, reference design, modules, etc. Low level electronics, we can say. Device makers, the cool one in this body, is in, char in charge of integrate Sigfox compatible hardware into their products. Sigfox is in charge of certify these end products through Sigfox and ready certification, which we'll see in the coming slides. Of course, we have Sigfox in the middle of the ecosystem, who is in charge of build and operate the network and provide connectivity subscriptions for its public network. In the software side, we have platform providers and applications providers, which roles, in most cases, are managed by only one player. Sigfox provides them Sigfox API, and they are in charge of data storage, analytics, visualization, device management, etc. The device maker is a key character in this movie, and as mentioned before, is part of the roots of the Internet of Things. They are the ones, you are the ones building the device, the devices which are going to provide data, valuable data for generating businesses. This means that also relies on you the responsibility of creating the best devices for allowing these businesses to succeed. So, who, you, who are you? Before starting, think about who you are. Your approach should be different depending on your size and your capabilities. This doesn't mean that a small player have less chances to success than a big player. It's just that the chances to success are different. This means a small player usually has a startup style, meaning that they are going to be quick taking decisions as, they, as the key people are going to be seated most probably side by side. They are going to be agile as they don't have to suffer due to tons of bureaucracy to proceed with changes in their specifications or launching specific tests or prototypes can be directly done by the same person without the need of sending the request to the quality department, maybe in another city or even in another country. They are flexible due to the points above. They have the capabilities to quickly adapt to the to new uh, needs or requirements. Due to their budget, their focus will most probably be small or medium productions, which in long terms can generate this small player to become in a big one if they want to. 
Another key point for small players is to focus in small medium customers, as big customers are going to require many resources that a small player might not have. In the other hand, a big player, as a corporation, usually are going to focus their effort on big customers, as they have dedicated resources for, for managing them. They are going to be solid in their products, as they could have a dedicated R&D department. As well, they are going to be able to easily escalate, as they most probably have a strong agreements with manufacturers. Usually, they tend to specialize as they are going to be focused on one specific use case or vertical. And of course, due to their resources and their relationships with uh, big customers, their production capabilities are big. And here is the device maker's journey, taking into account that these kind of processes are very similar for many technologies. What we present here is what for, from our experience, is the best process to build a Sigfos device. Of course, every case is different, so everything is open to deviation, adaptations, and exceptions. So take this device maker journey as a common process to build your Sigfos device. Starting point. Where is the need coming from? Usually, there are two sources, project-based and top-down. Project-based is when a customer has expressed a particular need or requirement. In this case, there is a specific environment to cover. The customer has a specific needs in terms of casing, if the device has to be attached to some kind of a structure, or if it needs some specific IP protection against dust and water, etc. For example, the customer operates in Europe, so the device is going to need a radio configuration for Zone 1. Or in the contrary, it is going to operate worldwide, so the device will need Monarch solution integrated, etc. So in a project-based approach, the device maker is going to have many parameters defined beforehand, as for example, Securitas Direct, who had the need of a communication technology strong against interferences and jamming for their alarms, and a device maker who work on a Sigfox solution based on their requirements. Top-down is when a company or an entrepreneur has analyzed the market and trends and came to the idea that a specific solution based on Sigfox technology can add value to a specific vertical or use case. For example, a device maker who analyzed the need in the market for, in the market for a tracking solution for non-powered assets, where a device with Sigfox technology can perfectly fit thanks to the energy efficiency of this technology, which allows the device to work even for more than 10 years. Or a device maker who detects a need on livestock for mon monitoring vital sign of the animal for years in order to detect diseases, for example. As you can see, the starting points are different depending on the business values value assessment. The first phase is the prototyping. For developers, engineers, or hobbyists, Sigfox is one of the easiest types of connectivity to start with. We designed the, designed the protocol in such a way that it only takes a few lines of code to start sending Sigfox messages. Through the Sigfox cloud, you can connect all your projects to the internet in a few minutes. The easiest way to connect to Sigfox for the first time is through a development kit. This is very useful to be familiarized with the technology and to better define the needs of the final device. It is the quickest way to discover Sigfox technology and start, start prototyping. Dev kits enable users to send their first Sigfox messages within minutes. They are very easy to use and provide an out-of-the-box experience, and generally, they include one or two years Sigfox connectivity subscriptions, which can be activated online. You can find a wide range of available kits on the Sigfox Partners network at partners.sigfox.com. As soon as you receive your kit, you can access our network with no extra work and get an account on the Sigfox Cloud. If your idea 
is already clear, just go for a verified module or a transceiver. We'll see in the next slide more details about their differences. The solution is a bit more complex than using a development kit because you will have to des design a specific PCB to mount your module, but will be better in terms of integration, final results, and your prototype will be more similar to the final device. If you're in early stage of the idea, better to go for a dev kit as the pos possibilities are bigger and there are multiple dev kits in the market with different sensors, like temperature, light sensor, magnet, etc., and with different technologies inside for use them with Sigfox, like Bluetooth low energy, Wi-Fi, GPS, etc. If the idea is more mature or the need is clear to work with verified modules or transceivers will be the better approach. Give me a second for <laughs> some water. So here we're in the design phase where the technical needs should be clear and the purpose is to design a device that better fit the needs. For that, we have to take into account which radio chipset. In order to create a SIGFOS enabled solution, you will need to integrate SIGFOS compatible radio chipset in your device. Thanks to SIGFOS open approach regarding hardware integration, the semiconductor ecosystem offers a wide variety of solutions to answer customer needs. You can use a SIGFOS verified module. A module is a ready-to-use component to be soldered to a board. It already integrates the Sigfox library and it's very easy to use. A Sigfox verified reference design. A reference design is a collection of schematics built of materials, including components, values, and tolerances, PCB layout, and PCB stack to be implemented on a board. It integrates the library, but this solution requires that your source use source the various components yourself. Your own modem designed based on a transceiver. This is the most complex solution as you will have to integrate the Sigfox library yourself. This is also more expensive as integration is more complex and certification, Sigfox verified certification is required, is more expensive but it can be interesting for high volume projects. Which solution is best? This depends on your needs, volume targets, and radio knowledge. Each product has its own advantages, electrical consumption, footprint price, other connectivity, etc. So it is up to the device maker to find the best solution for their product. In order to achieve a quick time to market, it is recommended to use a Sigfox verified module, as this is the fastest and easiest solution to work with Sigfox while providing very good performance. For larger volumes, all options are open. It depends on what your objectives are. Regarding the antenna, when developing your device, it is important to consider its antenna. This is the one element that connects your hardware to the Sigfox network. The choice, of your, the choice of your antenna will depend on several parameters, size, environment, in which the device will work, price, etc. It is therefore primordial to choose your antenna and antenna provider wisely. To help you, a white paper about antennas for Sigfox is available in build.sigfox.com where you can find this and many other technical information. The integration of the antenna into the device is a critical part of the device design. Severe degradation of performance may occur if the antenna integration is not properly analyzed. In this case, the maximum radiated power recommended might not be achieved. The device maker is responsible for adjusting the device radio parameters radiated power, harmonics, etc., in order to meet performances in the final application environment. Having reached the maximum recommended radiated power does not guarantee perfect reception once installed. installed. Only proper field testing can assert that. In terms, of, in terms of battery, 
The Sigfox technology has been optimized in every way possible to power efficient, to be power efficient, to allow devices to operate independently for a number of years without changing the power source. What does this mean for a device maker? One, predictability. As the Sigfox network does not use a handshake mechanism or any other type of power controlling system within the protocol, Sigfox is one of the only technologies allowing to precisely analyze and predict how much power you will use during the, your batteries, your device battery life. Two, which type of battery? Numerous power sources are available on the market, each with their own benefits. Which source to use depends on your use case as battery capacity can be impacted by a number of parameters. The question to answer before choosing are, how long is my device supposed to work? How many sensors need power while not sending messages? What are my constraints in, ter in terms of design? What temperature will be rich, etc. Once all parameters have been defined, you will be able to choose the most suitable source for your use case. Warning, don't undersize your power source whilst having the smallest batteries on the market could help with the design aspects, it is also important to consider the amount of power needed during transmission while choosing your battery. On average, radio solutions consume between 20 and 50 milliamps in transmission mode, which has a great impact on, on battery life. If your use case requires very small batteries, like coin, sale, coin cells, Special attention needs to be paid to this aspect. Three is the radio configuration impact. The various Sigfox radio configurations across the globe each use different ways of transmitting data. However, the impact on battery life is minimal if the correct approach is taken. For example, when the speed of transmission is six times higher in radio configuration zone two, the power required will be higher during the transmission. However, as the time of transmission is six times faster, the impact is minimal on battery consumption in general. Hence, the target radio configuration has to be considered when designing the board itself, as constraints are a bit different. And for radio solutions, each radio solution, module, system on chip, transceivers, has its own power consumption, which might vary from one provider to another, you should compare the differences between radio solutions in order to size the battery appropriately. From one module to another, you will see that the power consumption can almost double, depending on the partner. Again, to make our partner's lives easier, an application note on battery compatibility with the Sigfox technology is available in build.sigfox.com. And casing. Another important part to consider early on this, early on is the casing you plan to use for your device. The material of the casing will have an impact of the, on the radio performance of your final product. There are at least three points to be aware of when choosing a casing. One is the casing material. For better performances, consider plastics. Metal casing might look more solid, but will create issues for your device especially with radio propagation. Two is the casing production. Of the cell casings offer a good quality for the price. They are also great for low volumes orders. They have the advantage of being quick to buy and inexpensive. 3D printing can be interesting for very low volumes because you can design exactly what you need, but it can become expensive once you need more volume. And, in, and it requires extra work to adapt to your needs. Custom casings are reserved usually for producing medium high volumes devices. And the consideration number three is casing protection. Depending on your use case, an IP type casing is worth considering, particularly for outdoor or industrial use cases. It will protect your design from being exposed to water or dust. As mentioned previously, related info, info is available at build.sigfox.com.
once of the once on the proof of concept uh, phase uh, try to validate radiated performance comply with uh, applicable local regulations so this is uh, in this part is more is more open to to analyze what's going on with your device once you have designed your device you create your your you launch your small series of production uh, you do your test on site deployment uh, you check your behaviors monitorization of course uh, res uh, evaluate the results and uh, what you need at the end is most probably to iterate this process as you'll check that the device is going to have some uh, issues to solve or some uh, some uh, features to, to improve. Uh, for this proof of concept, uh, try to keep it reasonable. Uh, never more, never use more than 200 devices. Uh, so what is recommended is to use a uh, low volume of devices and never uh, extend the, the proof of concept more than 12 months. Try to, to, to keep your proof of concept uh, in a short time. Uh, use, your, use your proof of concept to test. Try to validate radiated performance. Uh, try to validate the coverage, the Sigfos network. Compare it with uh, compare the performance with a reference device. Uh, try to validate the technology that you are using uh, for the use case that you are developing your device. And of course, the most important thing. Uh, Use this device to prove that the business value that you are uh, developing the device for uh, is, uh, is useful. So after this, you have the certification. Uh, for the certification, you have the Sigfos Ready, which is a certification required for end products. This means that uh, you are going to develop a product based on different, uh, based on a module, or based on uh, a certified uh, Sigfos verified module, or based on uh, on a transceiver. So the Sigfos ready certification is a certification required for end products. So it's ensured the performance level, and it's ensured that uh, it conforms the Sigfos radio specification. The Sigfos verified uh, certification is uh, the the certification made for uh, modules, and um, this is. This has to be passed if you are if you base your device in a in a transceiver. So every commercial device uh, must be certified. This is mandatory, and it is but it is not mandatory to certify uh, prototypes. So for launching a certification, uh, you have to register register your project on build.sigfos.com and optionally make it public on partners.sigfox.com. You buy directly a test package from a, an accredited test house. All test houses are available on build.sigfox.com. Get your device tested in the accredited, accredited test house and you get the test reports. On build.sigfox.com, sign the legal agreement, pay for filling, upload the test reports provided by the accredited test house and you'll get certified. You get assigned a class reach. You can now use your Sigfox device, your Sigfox ready trademark, and advertise on partners.sigfox.com. Regarding the class that you get during the certification process, this is uh, the class uh, that you receive for the end product, meaning that uh, the higher is the class, meaning uh, zero, U is the maximum class. It, this means that the power radiated by your device is the maximum one. So this is key for a good coverage. As the coverage showed uh, by Sigfox is uh, the best for class zero devices. So it's important to have a device with the better certification as possible. And production. It seems that everything is ready once you have your device certified, but this is uh, uh, 
this is not the end. So the production uh, phase is also an important part and is a key part. So uh, you have to work hard on it. So be transparent and share your volume forecast. This is important as uh, you have to uh, make deals with manufacturers. So invest time on the quality tests that have to be performed. Uh, don't hesitate to uh, spend time and money on uh, have the best device as possible. Define a strategy and prepare a customer service as you'll have uh, dubs from partners, from a customer, etc. Anticipate your shipping and custom costs. And this is a, um, a cost that uh, usually you don't uh, realize that you have until you are going to purchase a device. And engage your phones on the device production. So the takeaway, 80% of the cost is decided during the 20% of initial project time. So it's key to have a project management to decide what to do and what not to do in order to avoid uh, expenses, uh, extra costs. Is it worthy a multi-purpose device? Usually what we see in Sigfox is a multi-purpose device uh, tries to do many things, but uh, at the end is not focused on one specific purpose. So this uh, multi-purpose device can be expensive and very complex to manage, but at the end is difficult to, to use it in a vertical or in a specific use case. So the most uh, uh, worthy devices that we have uh, been working with is a specific device for a specific use case. Find the right partner manufacturer to scale is a key. This is, uh, as mentioned before, to find a, a very good manufacturer and to sign a good agreement with it is a uh, key. So take good system decisions. Prepare early for efficient and cost-effective product. Target use cases and vertical. As mentioned before, to have a multi-purpose device can be a, can be a mess. So the key is to focus on one use case and the vertical. And of course, optimize for industrialization. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And if you have uh, questions, don't hesitate. Thanks a lot, Benigno. Uh, we will now take time to proceed with the second poll. Um, I think Benigno shared with us uh, really important uh, information and key elements. I hope that uh, these takeaways will help you guys in the process of making your device or sourcing someone I can do it for you. Uh, I will now quickly proceed with the last poll. It will take us 50 seconds and then we can proceed for uh, well, with the Q&A session. So please do write and send your questions or as a last resort, raise your hand so I can open your mic and you can directly exchange with us. Thank you. Let's proceed with the poll. Very well, time to proceed with the questions. We will first start with the question of Jesus Rojas. Benigno, for certification, then all Sixfox certified devices must have a label indicating the certification. Hello, Jesus, uh, very good question. 
Yes, once uh, a device has been certified, uh, it's going to receive a label, a trademark, uh, mentioning Sigfos Ready uh, device. So this is key to have this certification label. As uh, everyone knows, can know that your device has been certified, so it has passed all the Sigfos uh, technical requirements to be sold. So yes. Very well. We do have now a question from uh, John Arguirado Clemente. How much can the certification process cost? How long does this process usually take? Hello, John. In terms of costs, uh, you have to take into account that there are two certifications, uh, as we have mentioned before. We have the Sigfos Ready certification, which is uh, a certification for an end product. This certification costs around uh, 2,500 euros. Okay, this is for a first certification. If you certify uh, further devices, this will decrease, this can decrease until, uh, uh, to 500 euros. So the, the Sigfos Ready certification uh, goes from 500 euros to 2,500 euros. In the other hand, we have the Sigfos Verified certification. This, is, this certification is done for module, for module references, for modules, yeah, at the end. So um, for this certification, it's much uh, more complex and the process is longer. So the certification, it uh, costs around 7,500 euros. I hope this uh, answered your question. All right, thank you, Benigno. Next question from Christine Chen. Most large manufacturers have an MOQ, which most Sixbox system integrators and solution providers are not familiar dealing with, or are not prepared to take the risk stocking up on. What would be your advice on dealing with MOQs? Hello, Christine. Very good question. I think right now we are in a stage in the IoT uh, environment or in the IoT businesses where, of course, MOQ, MOQ is uh, very important for manufacturer, but uh, it's also uh, not easy to handle for an integrator or an end customer. So um, I think for starting a project, uh, uh, we should have the flexibility to have uh, some devices for testing and for, for proof of concepts. But of course, I, I agree that uh, MOQ is key for, for being able to escalate a project and for, for the manufacturer to be, for being able to produce uh, uh, high volumes and reduce the costs. So uh, at the end, I think we have to find the balance between uh, the devices needed for, for a proof of concept or for a pilot, which uh, can be low volumes, and the MOQ needed for, um, for a manufacturer to escalate and to decrease costs. So it's a matter of uh, a balance. All right, thank you, Benigno. Next question. Uh, Daniel Ortiz is asking uh, if only the antenna is certified or the products can be certified. Hello, Daniel. Uh, the certification is for the end product, for the entire product. So if you have an antenna, uh, yeah, of course you have an antenna inside of the device. So the certification is not passed for the antenna, but for the entire device. Very well. Uh, we now have a next question from Cyrineo Fernandez. To get a certification for a device, do I need to have a Sigfox modem sold on the PCB? All my devices only have one socket to couple the modules of other IoT protocols according to the best solution. Hi, it's uh, uh, Yes, if you... Yes, um, uh, for certified uh, device, uh, the, the, the device that you certify has to be the, the end product, so the final device. Uh, this means that has to be the, the final casing, the final electronics, the final sensors, 
and everything is going to be as uh, the end product that is going to be sold. This is for the uh, Sigfos Ready certification, which is a certification passed for the end product devices. Okay, uh, for the Sigfos Verified devices, you have to design. If you're if you are this, uh, certifying your module, you are not. If you're not working with a, a Sigfos Verified module, but uh, you are working uh, on your own module, you have to certify this module. I hope this answered your question. Very well. Uh, we have a last question from uh, Christine Chen. Does Sigfox Ready certification include casing? Does modification of the casing always impact Sigfox Ready certification? So, Christine, um, yes, the Sigfox Ready certification is also for the casing. So, as mentioned before, is uh, based on the entire end product. Uh, you can find uh, much more information about the certification in build.sigfox.com where there is a, a handbook about certification with all the details uh, because it's true that uh, depending on what you change on your device, you have uh, to, certify, to pass uh, one kind of, of certification, uh, one variation of certification or, or another. Uh, but you have all the details on build.sigfox.com. Uh, I'll be happy to share with you. All right, uh, Daniel Ortiz is asking, uh, if I'm a new integrator of solutions, how can I create or make a PCB for a new device? Where uh, can I find the schematics or a document that let me know how I can connect all the components? I think it's the same. Uh, So, Daniel, um, if you're talking about how you uh, build up a device with uh, Sigfox, uh, you have also many schematics, for example, for our uh, Sensit device, which is a kind of a development uh, kit or development device. And we have all the schematics, uh, again, in, in build.sigfox.com. These schematics, you can uh, use them and you can uh, modify them as, uh, as you wish. Um, uh, so yes, you can you can build up all the all the solution that you need uh, based on that. Or if you are working with a module or with a reference design, uh, you can contact directly to the to the uh, system on chip uh, provider or a transceiver transceiver provider or module provider, and uh, they will provide you the the documentation and all the schematics for you to being able to to build up your your device. All right, we will proceed with the last question. Um, good news is that you can still uh, now take uh, the chance to write it down. Uh, I will uh, gather all the remaining questions that we didn't address and uh, send it to Benigno so he can uh, answer them away to you guys. Um, last question from Mahmoud, uh, who is asking, what kind of changes will affect the certificate and a new one should be needed? I guess uh, Mahmoud is referring to casing from the previous question. Hello, Mahmoud. Uh, yes, as mentioned before, uh, all these different changes that uh, will affect the certification uh, are depicted on build.sigfox.com. Uh, uh, for example, the casing is one of them. If you change as well uh, some sensors inside of a device, for example, if you have a, a temperature sensor device and uh, then you want to change uh, for adding a um, humidity uh, sensor, uh, this device has to uh, be uh, certified again, but uh, you don't have to launch like the entire certification. So you don't have to launch the 2,500 euro certification again, but you have to uh, you have to launch like a small certification. So it depends on the change you you do. Uh, if the if the changes are casing or the changes are sensors or the changes are, um, for example, you are changing your uh, module. Uh, for beam from uh, for uh, radio configuration one to radio configuration two, you don't have to launch the entire certification, but some of the some part of the certification. I hope this uh, clarifies. Very well. Uh, thank you everyone for your attention. Thank you for attending this webinar. Thank you Benigno for hosting it, and thank you to Sigfox Spain.
see you for our other editions of our webinars and speak to you soon. Bye-bye.